get started because I'm going to be pointing and lecturing a lot. I'm an academic, so I do very much lecture style when I'm doing this. But I'm also a historian, and I'm a public historian specifically. So when I try to think of presentations, I try to think of something that can apply to the broadest sense possible. I want to appeal to judges because it's a judges conference. But I also want to appeal to the exhibitors in the audience. So that's what I was thinking of when I was asked to put together a presentation on fitting and conditioning cavies. I think all the judges in the room can agree this has been a big issue on the table lately. And if I've been your judge lately, you've heard me talk about it. So let's get started. First, I want to start by talking about proper care and grooming. Um, we've heard some stuff about teddies today. Um, Sarah got into some stuff with the long hairs today. With the Abbeys, uh, long time Abbey breeder here, you use a toothbrush generally and brush from the center of the rosette outward, and then you press those ridges sh shut. That helps keep and maintain their shape and form. With the teddies, you have a picture down here, blowing them out as Allison was referring to earlier, along with those brushes. The long hairs, you're gonna brush them, you're gonna wrap them. And one big thing that a lot of people miss, especially when you have too many pigs, is the washing cycle. <laughs> so, you want to wash, let's see if I can get them all. Americans, American satins, white crested, silkies, cornets, silky satins, Peruvians, Peruvian satins. And don't wash the abbeys. I didn't say abbeys. I didn't say abbeys. No textiles, no abbeys, no teddies. Um, instead, with textiles, I included a spray bottle down here, and you're going to want to spritz those with warm water, scrunch those curls. Um, you can blow out the long hairs as well. So, when we're thinking about judging, we can see how proper care affects judging. You can see my lovely picture here that my friend Courtney Bond took at a show. Um, if you can't see it very well, you can make out my entire handprint on this rag from Dirty Pigs because people didn't wash their animals before they were judging. So I judged, uh, I think that was not even all of the Americans. That was, oh yeah, and any other selfs. Um, <laughs> That's what my rag looks yes. like after I do black. We have a great Christmas show. You don't even have to get to any other self, just black. Yeah. So. Oh. You can see that this is obviously a problem. Um, when judging, what that does is it makes harsh coats, poor texture, damaged coats, uneven density, and poor condition um, of that overall coat structure. You're not presenting your pig in its truest form, nor are you presenting it well to a judge. Um, when you're thinking about nails, where are they at? Okay, here's no more. Who knows what these are? <laughs> Who uses them? <laughs> yeah, so nails are a very large thing. I just judged a show down in the south somewhere where all three of the judges had a conversation after the show and all of us remarked about how bad the nails were. Um, you need to make sure that when your cavies get a spa day, they get the full spa treatment. They're getting a pedicure and a manicure and a full body wash. They're getting the whole deal. Um, that will allow the cavies to pose naturally on the table. Uh, when the cavies' nails are too long, if they don't sit well on the carpet, they're not going to pose in the way that presents their truest form, and that affects judging. When we're thinking about feeding and nutrition, I think Allison got into this very well with the teddies. Um, improper feeding or nutrition levels will impact your flesh condition, your coat condition, and the overall health of your animal, which we'll get to in just a second. And then also preventative treatments. Uh, lice, mites, and fungus, these are all things that you need to think about in regard to your own care of your animal, but also the judges have to think about as they're judging animals. So what judges can do about improper care? So we have this thing that I used for the first time probably about six months ago, uh, unworthy of an award. The standard states, when any KV is not of the quality to be placed on the basis of type, color, condition, or coat, a notation shall be made by the judge unworthy of an award. In the case that I had this happen, there was a Peruvian that was brought to me and its coat structure was very damaged. It did not present to be a Peruvian um, and I unworthy of an award it based on the condition, the coat. Uh, other things you can do are fault. We have bony or protruding hips, mostly due to nutrition things. Shedding or out of condition, urine stains, broken toenails, thin and extremely poor flesh, 
broken toenails, I know for a fact that impacted that same show I was talking about because the toenails were so long they were getting caught in the carpet and then breaking off. Oh, and then it, that was just my show, which I was the first judge. So by the time I got to the third judge, you can tell that those animals were getting faulted for something that could have been taken care of with nail clippers. Disqualifications. Uh, abnormal eye discharge, bare spots, disease, boils, abscesses, a raw infected source, pot belly, mangy scruffy condition, parasites, fungus, weight, missing toenails, missing teeth, faking, including the cutting of matted hair and long hairs. Um, obviously, you can see how I'm connecting all these things through the care of your animal. What's the first picture and the second picture? This is lice. So <laughs> there's one little guy there that you can kind of see in the picture on the screen, not so well up here. Uh, this is more of a mangy coat. It's got some bare spots. That is cutting due to matting uh, on the rump of a long hair. And they cut it, and then they still tried to show it? I just pulled this offline. I asked for pictures online and um, had some interesting things happen um, with that. So I had to result to going to the internet and just trying to find pictures that I could use. So I don't know if they tried to show it. Um, I have seen animals come to the table where they were very obviously cut from being matted. Um, most of the time, first time exhibitors, they didn't know that that's not okay. It was a disqualification for faking. Um, what did you say the middle picture The middle picture? Yeah. It's a mangy coat. It looks like um, a baby. It looks like yeah. a baby, but it's not? Could be. Again, an online picture. It's just more for the reference of a mangy coat. Also, like, there's a bare spot here. I had one of my own cavies at the 2014 Texas Convention, uh, not like the Texas Pines in relation to the Michigan pine and shoot its entire side down and it was an abbey. So like pretty rare for that to happen on an abbey. Um, but it was kind of like the same sort of coat type flaw where he had to shoot himself so far down that it was, yeah. Um, but it's, it's that it gets to be a bare spot and then it's a disqualification. I like to talk a lot in my presentations. I'd rather ask, answer questions. So if anybody has questions on how care impacts judging, uh, let's start here and then I'll go to Mary Lee. The question was, is it common for judges to get infections from the animals they're judging? Um, I personally haven't had it happen. I know of judges that have. Um, specifically out west, I know of a few judges who've gotten ringworm from handling animals that had ringworm. Um, but I have no personal experience with that. I don't know if any judges in the audience want to participate in that comment. Go ahead, Mary Lou. Comment on how you can get false density for not grooming your cadence on long hairs and tails. False density? Yes. You know what I'm talking about. You can comment on it. Okay, if a coat is dirty, say a teddy coat is dirty, if it's full of... Oh, the teddies, yeah. <laughs> You're going to have a false sense of density. That's not a true density. Yes. The issue with long hairs, if they are dirty, if there's gunk in their coats, it will feel denser than if it's a clean coat. Um, it also, that also affects your texture, too. So when you're assessing texture, it's you get harsh. a much better feel from a clean coat yeah. on a long hair than you do from a dirty coat. Yes. Oh, I'm so And does that apply to abbeys too? Because they're not being washed, is there a false? Uh, to the no. Actually, I don't really. think it works that way. No, I, I agree. The dirty abbey coat actually doesn't stand up properly. Mm -hmm. It actually hurts them more. It opens the, the coat. Yeah. yeah. You can trim the tips off. Yes, it is absolutely necessary. Yeah, some of the baby nails are razor sharp. Like, I have sand rabbits, and I have had worse cuts from young cadies than my rabbits because people don't trim their toenails as young ones. I got sales pigs that are young. I trimmed them before I came more questions? Comments? Participation? What type of nutrition feeding do you suggest? Well, room? if you can see my hat here, I use Heinold feeds. 
Um, but what supplements do you suggest to increase? I don't use a ton of supplements. I know other people do. Uh, the, mostly the things that we feed are veggies, carrots, spinach. Um, we've done kale. Yeah. But just vegetables. For me, yes. I know other people use electrolytes or uh, various vitamin C additives. Yeah, you have to know your line. If I fed our animals what uh, Allison feeds her animals, ours would be blitz. Oh, potty, like yeah, super, just, so it does, like, yeah, like, our feed doesn't work for so Americans. Very, <laughs> it does not work. We have to be very careful. Because of PI and all animal. sorts of, like, it doesn't it's work. Potty. It just doesn't. Well, everything makes a potty. So that's also saying, your marriage is worse than mine. Yeah. Yeah. But the <laughs> first thing is, is the availability. Yeah. Our blocks are different. Just you gotta know your line. You gotta tr experiment to a small degree, but don't change like every three weeks. You're not gonna never know. And do it on a, a small portion of your animals before you before you go to your whole herd. Okay. Did you have a question? Could you comment on the physical activities you can yeah. Um, hmm. What was the question? The question was, can I comment on physical activity in regards to conditioning? Um, I'm trying to think of how I want to. So, outside of just the, the having proper cage space for them to move around, um, I don't really do much outside of that. I obviously take them out and watch them before shows. Um, speaking of which, you should do that two to three days before a show. Um, yeah. Oh, and one thing that I really want to know, don't use an oil-based shampoo. I just judged a show where they used an oil-based shampoo and it completely ruined the texture of the coat and made it uh, American look like a satin. Oh, wow. And you could feel the oils on your fingers after oh, touching yeah. the pig. Yeah. So avoid oil-based shampoos. Make sure you drink some really well. Yes. Yeah. I was also told to put the water on one side and the food bowl on the other, so they have to move to go back and forth. Um, I know with long hairs too, a lot of people will get them out and put them on a stand so that they're used to grooming. Yeah. Um, that way, they're not. You should handle all of your exhibit animals and close yes. them, get them used to being handled, because that's how they're going to show their best on the day of the show. Yes. We had a friend in Alaska, Texas that we showed again for several years at Nationals. And two times we had animals going in hers for best of breed. Our animal sat like a stone. And she said, oh, our animal going? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she beat us both times because her animal pulled so much better. Not that our animal was you know, worse, we just wouldn't sit for it. And, Likewise. And that makes a huge difference on the show table. Likewise, when your animals are handled frequently, um, I have animals that I know are relaxed, and when, as soon as you touch them, they firm right up, yep. and they're like a rock. Yep. But if you were, if you wouldn't handle that same pig every day, they would remain soft and flabby yep. because they're not going to tense up, yep. because they're not expecting to be posed and handled in the way that you want them to be presented. Um, as far as, as a judge, if you say, see, you say you see two teddies on the table, and they're both pretty comparable as far as quality. Um, say even one that isn't groomed is slightly better than the one that is groomed. As far as condition wise, are you more likely to use an animal that is better groomed and better conditioned as far as pulling all that dead hair out or other than like a teddy that say, you know, has all that dead hair slipping out, even though maybe just like maybe a point better? Oh, yeah. For me, when I judge teddies specifically, I go on balance of coat. Um, I want a nice even coat. Uh, so one that is not properly presented or groomed is not going to carry the evenness of coat that a properly groomed animal will, so probably would go with the properly groomed animal. No matter what the standard says, there's 10 points of condition. Condition affects everything on the animal. It affects yes. your color, it affects your coat. So it's, it's in reality, it's more than the 10 points. But if you have a well-conditioned animal, it's going to have everything better on the animal than an unconditioned animal. That's what I was trying to get at with this slide. Any more comments? I'm loving this discussion. This is how I think judges conferences should be, in my opinion. Yes. A big discussion. I feel like you learn more that way. Never wash an Emmy. I, I, 
I had somebody tell me that they recently washed their abbeys when they get dirty, and I was like, please don't. No. Um, I raised no, abbeys for 17 years. I'm actually sending my last abbeys away here. Um, so yeah, lots of, lots of experience with them. Um, I've just fallen in love with Americans now, so I'm moving on to something else. Oh yeah, but. Hey, I used to wash my abbeys and my teddies. You did? Uh, but I do them a good two weeks before a show. Yeah, that's are, are we still supposed yeah. pencils? Like a certain way? No, it doesn't change it. I feel like pexels, you should focus more on presenting them so they stay still on hold. You can put them on a grooming rack like you would a long hair and just have them sit. Um, I feel like my biggest problem when I'm judging a texel is that when I'm trying to feel for its density and curl, it, yeah, they're moving around. They're not going to sit properly. And I said that's probably what I would focus more on with. Yeah. Yeah. Especially with the copy body style that Sarah was talking about earlier, they're, they're pretty much ready to go. Yeah. which are a running breed, is they're the running breed of cavies. Yes. Yes. So. Yes. Yes. treated differently obviously with dry skin you can put some lotion or um, a little bit of oil even you gotta be careful again because if it gets to the coat then it's a problem but usually you can just lotion those back up and it'll be fine um, It's a poultry oil for their feet, so it like brings natural, it's a natural oil that you can put on, the, I put it on their ears and feet sometimes, like a few weeks before a show, say if they are a little bit dry, just with a Q-tip and just yeah, oil yeah, their ears. Yeah, yeah. Just, just a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, something I noticed is we never, I've never heard anyone talk about cleaning the ears, like ever. There's nasty stuff in like, you give them in bath. all their ears. When you bathe No, no, inside the ears. Yeah, you when can't you bathe put them. water, yeah, like you can use little Q-tips and stuff. Yeah, you could definitely use Q-tips. I've seen people do it. Um, there's some cavies that generally have more wax content than others. Um, I mean, again, it's about knowing your line, I think. Um, I, I don't think I've ever had to clean out their ears, but I know of people who have, and they just Q-tip it like a human. Yes, but it's like, so some ears come out, they're not nasty. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And all those little full My Americans. Yeah. yeah. My Americans are very clean. Ew. Yeah. Okay. Well, all of my sexuals are from different people, different breeds, different breeders, and they're like, 
Sometimes their cave suits will help clean their yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have a buddy system in my cave area, so they probably do clean each other. <laughs> Dales. Yeah. They clean the ear tags so the giant. Yes. Yes. Don't get the laser tags. They fade. Laser tags are terrible. Good job. All right. All right. Thanks, Dale.